games inspire other games. Video games aren't the only medium that this is true in, but you can see video games that are inspired by others all over the place. Stardew Valley was inspired by the Harvest Moon series. Splitgate was inspired by Halo and Portal. Bioshock was inspired by System Shock. And the list can go on and on. The game I'm looking at today also has an inspiration, but it probably isn't the inspiration you would expect. Vampire Survivors may look like it is heavily inspired by Castlevania with its character sprites and enemies, but this is actually not the case. It is actually inspired by a mobile game called Magic Survival in the gameplay that this game presented. The theme of the game came from an asset pack that the developer had that was based off of Castlevania, and the rest was history. It may not be an intentional inspiration, at least that Castlevania inspiration, but it certainly works with the game. Vampire Survivors is a bit of a hard game to classify. It is a roguelike, but beyond that, it gets a bit unclear. You could call it a time-based survival game, an automatic horde shooter, bullet hell, or a reverse bullet hell since you're the one eventually shooting tons of projectiles out at the enemies. Whatever genre you want to classify it as, it was developed by Ponkel. It was released for PC, Xbox, and mobile in 2022 but started as early access in 2021. Vampire Survivors goes for $4.99 on PC and Xbox, but the mobile versions are free to play. The Microsoft Store shows that Vampire Survivors has a T rating. I wasn't able to find anything on the ESRB, but if this is true, this is really way too high of a rating in my opinion. I would put Vampire Survivors as much more of an E10 game. Sure, it has horror themed monsters, but it isn't scary, doesn't really have any blood or gore. The worst thing is that it's a challenging game, but I don't think the challenge of a game really plays into ratings. So as I said, I would stick this as E10 and T is just kind of uh, a little bit too much in my opinion. Now there isn't really a story to Vampire Survivors, so the focus then gets put on the gameplay. Vampire Survivors is fairly simple on the surface, but holds quite a bit of complexity underneath that surface. You start each round by picking a character. Each of the characters starts with a unique weapon as well as some kind of bonus. To start with, you can only pick Antonio, who starts with a whip weapon and gains 10% might every 10 levels until he reaches level 50. You then select the stage that you want to play. And again, at the beginning, you only have access to one level, Mad Forest. When you enter a stage, your goal is to survive for 30 minutes. Enemies will continually spawn into the map, and as you defeat them, they'll drop experience gems that will allow you to gain levels. Each level your character gains, you'll be able to select between three or four options. These will either be new weapons, new passive abilities, or an upgrade to an already equipped weapon or upgrade. You will be able to hold up to six weapons and six passive items at a time. There are ways to kind of get more as you kind of get more familiar with the game, but this is kind of the basic setup. This helps you gain power as you continue on and will equip you to face the tougher enemies that come as the stage progresses. Now, one thing to note here is that all weapons are used automatically. That's why this wouldn't really classify as a shoot 'em up or twin stick shooter game because you don't have control over where your weapons fire. Each of the weapons has their own unique attack pattern, and you have to move your character in ways that you'll be able to attack and defeat enemies. So controls are really super basic here, as you can only move around. Everything else is really done automatically. Now, over time, there will be boss monsters that will appear. If you defeat them, they will drop treasure chests. Chests will provide you with an upgrade for one of your items, either a weapon or passive item. There are also chances that chests will give you more than one items, with some chests offering up to three and even five items within. These happen fairly rarely though, so don't expect them too much. Chests can also cause a weapon to evolve. Evolutions only occur if the weapon is leveled up fully and you have the associated weapon or passive item needed to complete the evolution. Weapons are always required to be fully leveled, even whenever there's two weapons getting merged together. They both need to be at max level, but the passives don't typically need to be. There are some exceptions to this rule, but they are in the minority. Typically, you only need two items for evolution as well, but again, there are exceptions here also where you may need three items to complete an evolution instead of just two. You can also find various items as you break light stands in the levels. The most common items will be floor chicken, that heals your character, and coins or coin bags that give you money to help buy upgrades from the menu and purchase unlocked characters. There are also rarer power-ups like a rosary that kills all enemies on the screen, a Naduya Frita Tanto, which is a spicy sausage that turns you into a flamethrower for a short period of time, 
a watch called Orologion, which freezes enemies for 10 seconds, a vacuum that gathers all experience gems to the character, and little clovers that increases your luck stat by 10%. As you play, you'll start unlocking all kinds of new things by accomplishing various challenges. These kind of challenges include surviving in a level for so long, gaining so many levels for certain characters, upgrading weapons, finding certain items in the map, and many other challenges. You'll unlock these things at the end of your current run, which will end either when you die or after that 30 minutes is over, which, I mean, you die there too as you're killed by a Grim Reaper that is extremely hard to defeat. After dying, you can use any money you earn to buy upgrades in the power-ups menu or to purchase any characters you may have unlocked. You're then able to start again with the new weapons, characters, or levels that you've unlocked. This is a pretty simple loop, but there's just so much content and things to uncover in this game that it's pretty ridiculous, and I mean that in a, in a good way. I have really loved my time with this game. It's simple, but challenging. The controls and gameplay are pretty basic, but there is a deep complexity to the game that you may miss at first glance. The plethora of unlocks and systems like weapon evolution and other unlockable extras can really change the shape of the game over time. I also really enjoy the limited amount of time each stage takes. Similar games where you're taking on hordes of enemies can last until you die or exhaust a number of lives. As you get better at these games, a run can take a really long time, which can wind up hard to fit into your day. That's not an issue here as the runs top out at 30 minutes. There's even an unlock that you can get later that makes the time go faster and reduces a level to around 15 minutes. If you want, there will be a mode that you can unlock later in the game that allows you to do an endless run where there is no kind of time limit. If you do have lots of time and wanna see how far you can get and how long you can survive and how powerful you can become, but you don't have to do that. So between the enjoyable gameplay loop and the limited time each run takes, this combo basically personifies that idea of just one more run. You can lose a lot of time to vampire survivors if you're not careful. Now, you may wonder, do I have any criticisms of the gameplay? I can't think of any major issues, but there was one I was able to come up with. There are certain items in the game that you have to find in the levels. These items usually require you to travel quite a bit of distance in order to find them, but it can be super hard to keep getting leveled up while also trying to move long distances in a level. This can make it really hard to keep your power up enough to be able to kill things while also moving towards your goal. Since the game is fairly difficult, falling behind in power is really hard to dig out from, and this can lead to some frustration um, as you die before you're really able to get to the item that you were wanting to find. It may just mean that you have to dedicate a run to getting the desire item quickly and not worried about leveling up. That isn't necessarily ideal either, as some of the items that you do have to go far distance to find are ones you actually have to like level up as an item. But that's about the only real criticism that I have of the game. And even then, it's a pretty minor one and is only really relevant for when you're trying to find some of the items that are far away. As you get further in the game, there are also things that make this easier. But early on, this can be a bit frustrating. Moving from the gameplay to the art style of the game, I have to say that I'm a pretty big fan of the style the game has going on. I enjoy a game with a retro style and enjoy the Castlevania inspired theme, whether it was kind of a random accident or not. The whole style is really just enjoyable for me. It's not terribly complex, but it doesn't have to be for a horde attack game like this. Even so, there are a wide variety of enemies, the player characters are all pretty unique looking with some exceptions, and the art style just really kind of meshes well together overall. If there was a weak point in the art of the game, I would say it is in the levels and the level design. The levels, at least in the base game, are pretty simple looking and tend to be very repetitive in terms of structure. This makes it kind of hard to feel like you're making progress towards some of those items on the map that do take a while to get to because everything looks very similar. So it just kind of feels like you're going and you're like, oh, have I actually made it that far or am I, am I, am I actually getting closer? There is also one level in particular that just seems very out of place in the midst of the game, and that's the, the dairy plant. Like, maybe there's some kind of joke here that I'm just missing, but it just seemed really random to me anyhow. Now overall, none of these really bug me that much. A game like this doesn't really need to have a lot of details, but the levels did very much feel like video game levels and not actual locations. Now, this is a video game, so again, not a big deal, but this is probably the weakest link in terms of the art style, in my opinion. Now, I should note that this is for the base game levels. I'm not really dealing with the DLC here. I might make separate videos kind of talking about those, but it does seem like the 
maps there are kind of more detailed and have a little bit more of a location feel than a video game stage feel. So maybe if I if I get into those, I will review them appropriately at that time. Now, I found the sound for the game to be very solid as well. The music is super fitting. It sounds like it would fit some of the older Castlevania games, like that you could play levels with some of these and put them in an old Castlevania game and they'd fit really well. And so it just meshes with that kind of Castlevania inspired art style and and theme that the game has going on. Um, Sound effects are also pretty good here. They're maybe not quite as interesting as the music, but I think they do the job well. And some of the sounds are pretty interesting, like the sounds for the Pentagon evolution. That's the one that kind of sticks in my mind. But yeah, if I did have to complain about the sound side of the game, it is that the default volume places the sound effect volume maybe a little too high. It wasn't bad in the early game because you're not really shooting a lot and not really hitting a lot. But near the end where you can have all kinds of projectiles flying around, it got a bit loud and even a bit annoying with a constant stream of noise. It kind of drowned out everything else. It drowned out the music, I feel like. This had a simple fix by just turning down the volume for the sound effects a little and it was all good. So again, this isn't a big issue. It was just probably the one thing that I did notice. I didn't really experience any performance issues with Vampire Survivors. I don't even really recall experiencing any slowdown or stuttering as the screen filled with enemies and projectiles shooting all over the place. That was probably my biggest worry in a game like this. This may vary quite a bit depending on what your computer is like, but from my own experience in the game, I didn't really have any, any issues. As you've probably gathered from my review, I thoroughly enjoyed Vampire Survivors. I love the gameplay loop, and it's a game that epitomizes the idea of just one more round. The amount of content in the game is really quite surprising as well, given that it's only a $5 game. It's an amazing value for the money, as long as you like the type of game it is. The theme of the game may have been somewhat randomly decided, but it all works. While the main inspiration might not have been Castlevania for Vampire Survivors, it does a great job in using the Castlevania theme to create a fun and frantic experience that contains a ton of unlockables and plenty of variety to keep you playing for a long time. This probably won't come as any surprise, but I'm rating Vampire Survivors a 10 out of 10. I just can't really find anything too major that brings this game down. It has a fun core gameplay loop, a good variety of weapons and items, not to mention other unlockables, and is a great value for very budget price. May not be a game full of cutting edge graphics, but it is a game that proves that you don't need those things to have a great game. The big limiting factors here are whether you will enjoy the type of game it is. If you aren't into roguelikes or arena shooter style games, Vampire Survivors probably won't be for you. However, if these genres are interesting to you or what you've seen here piques your interest, then I highly recommend that you give Vampire Survivors a try.